it is Book Tell with Chad Sell. I know it's supposed to be Book Talk, but Tell rhymes with Sell, so that's how it's going. And welcome to Chad's Book Tell. Mm. Welcome to Chad's Book Tell. Nope, nope. Welcome to Chad's Book Talk, where we talk about books with Chad. It's a book tell because my last name is Sell, so it's book tell with Chad Sell. All right, here we go. Today we are talking about the deaf musicians. Seems like it shouldn't be possible, but it is. Just wait till you find out. All right, the deaf musicians is a story by Pete Seeger and Paul Dubois Jacobs. It is illustrated by R. Gregory Christie. So Pete Seeger has also written a few other books. Uh, he wrote a book called Abiyoyo, um, and then Paul Dubois Jacobs, the other author of this, uh, also helped him write Abiyoyo Returns and Some Friends to Feed. Um, and some interesting stuff about Pete Seeger, as I was looking into him some more, he's also written some music and songs um, that were very popular in the 1950s during a lot of social activism uh, movements. Now this story is super unique. It is about a jazz musician, or a jazz pianist more specifically, who loses his hearing. Um, and instead of getting really upset and dejected and um, kind of knocked down by this hurdle, uh, he overcomes it by discovering his love for jazz music within sign language. So it's a really interesting book about how uh, we can overcome obstacles um, and how we can rediscover passions that we think are lost when those obstacles come our way. Um, and something that I found like super fascinating about it is just the correlation between jazz music and sign language uh, and how this book kind of displays a way of communicating that isn't audible or isn't spoken language. It's, it's through signs and then through signing music, which I think is really fascinating. So I'm going to read two excerpts from here um, and talk about them a little bit. Uh, the illustrations in this are really fun, the really bright colors. So all right, I'm going to start with this first excerpt here when Lee first realizes he's losing his hearing and doesn't want to tell his band. Lee was almost afraid to tell them he couldn't hear their notes. He was losing his hearing. His bandmates tried to cover for him, but Lee was just plain off. His music came out like this, ronk, fip, tonk. It wasn't long before the band leader noticed too. I'm sorry, Lee, but I'll have to let you go. Who will listen to a deaf musician? Poor Lee. He couldn't hear the trumpet go, doodle bop, 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 bang, bing. He couldn't hear the bass go, boom, ba, boom, 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 boom. That night, riding home on the subway, Lee saw an advertisement for a school for the deaf. Maybe I can learn how to do something new, he thought. The school turned out to be a very cool place. Lee loved sign language the best. To him, it looked like jazz. He saw hands dancing with a doodle bop bop. He saw bit fingers. He saw fingers talking with a boo bang bing. He saw bodies moving with a sh sh sh. -sh you learn quick, said one man with his hands. You must be a musician. I used to be, said Lee sadly. Well, stick with me and you'll see, said the young man. My name's Max, and I play the sax. All right, now this excerpt is like, I think is super fascinating because you have on the one hand, all these different onomatopoeias describing jazz music. Uh, you have the doodle bop bop of the trumpet and the bomba boom of the bass, and then a few pages over, you have this same onomatopoeia jazz language describing sign language. Uh, so you have doodle bop bop for hands now, um, and fingers with boo bang bing, and shish shish shugal for the bodies moving. Um, just this really cool correlation between body movement and music. And then the next passage I'm going to read is how this sign language music uh, starts becoming a way of communicating and helps Lee make some new friends. On one ride home, Lee and Max got to playing a song. They found they could follow each other perfectly. Lee played the notes of his piano, plink a plunk, bump, plink plank, yimba timba tang, zing zang. Max played the notes of his sax, doodle bop bop, boo bang bing. 
Each musician heard the music in his own mind. It wasn't long before they were tossing tunes back and forth every day. One evening, a woman came up to them. I know this song, she signed, fingers aflutter as if playing a stand-up bass. Boom, 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 boom. I like your style, said Lee. Will you join our band? asked Max. The woman laughed. I'd be honored. The name's Rose. So here we have friend friendships developing and um, communication happening between musicians who are deaf. Um, so it's just really fascinating display of communication um, and just an example of how um, when something comes your way and you lose what you think you're most passionate about, that doesn't necessarily always mean it's lost to you forever. Um, Lee found a way to still be passionate about his jazz and still be involved in jazz music through sign language. All right, so I really like this book and I highly recommend it to others um, for like all the reasons that I said earlier about what the book's about. Uh, it also, it could be used in a lot of different content areas, which is cool. Um, obviously you have music, so the arts, and then you can have it in language and English classes. Um, there's obvious carryovers there. But you could also use it for social studies. Something I didn't mention earlier is uh, one of the authors, Pete Seeger, was a pretty important guy in the 1950s. Pete Seeger also wrote a lot of songs uh, that were popular in the 1950s. Some of their names were Turn, 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 Where Have All the Flowers Gone, and his especially, especially, especially popular one, If I Had a Hammer, which goes like this. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening all over this land. I'd hammer out danger. I'd hammer out a warning. I'd hammer out love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. Yeah. It's really interesting then to listen to his music. Uh, and the message of his lyrics and what he stood for, and then read this book and see how some of that carried over. So you could incorporate it into a social studies lesson um, if you're studying the 1950s or social activism. Um, and then you could look at this book and be like, well, this doesn't seem to relate to social activism in any way, but how did the ideas of the 1950s, how are some of those maybe displayed in this book? Or how is that author's uh, perception or understanding of that time reflected in this book? Um, so that could be an interesting use of the book. Uh, I would say, it would probably be best for middle school or upper elementary. It is a simple book, like it doesn't have a lot of words and stuff, but because of the content, um, I would probably not necessarily use it with really young kids because uh, a lot of stuff might go over their heads. I definitely think boys and girls would both be interested in this, especially if they're interested in music. So that's all I have to say about the deaf musicians. Definitely give it a read uh, and find out creative ways that you can use this in your classroom. Um, and check out more of Pete Seeger's music because it's some really interesting stuff um, and it might seem a little strange but sometimes it's good to expose yourself to music that you might that is very different or strange to you. Um, and then a little biblical integration if you are able to do so or if you're sneaky enough to slip it in there. Uh, you could throw in a reference to Jeremiah 29 11 um, and talk about how uh, no matter what happens, there is a plan and a purpose for your life, uh, and don't let obstacles or challenges take you away from any God-given passions that have been instilled in you. Um, so yeah, that's the Deaf Musicians. Thanks for listening.